Now today's our topics will be on advanced gastric cancer, role of chemotherapy. And today's faculty is Dr. Asma Siddika, who is associate professor of radiation oncology in NSRA. And our overseas faculties is Dr. Jahid Khan, who is a senior medical oncologist practicing in Clatter Bridge Cancer Hospital, UK. Uh, not definitely, we have to mention that he is a uh, son of soil of this country. Is a bright soil, the son of this soil. Uh, so, without any delay, I would like to request our chairperson, Professor M. Haisar, to give a words to inaugurate the program. I just welcome to all the participants, faculties, and our guests from Japan. Good afternoon. I think without any delay, we start to we'll go to this, uh, our business statement. Start. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, as, as the design of our program, I would like to request our uh, program uh, operator to post this poll. So Shona, can you please post the poll, poll yes, question? Sir. Yes, sir. So I'd like to request all the participants to participate in the poll. I think Dr. Asma needs to stop the screen share. Come on. Yeah. Asma, yeah. can you please stop the screen sharing? Okay. Uh, so let us discuss the issues later, later part of this presentation. Now, can you please proceed to the second question? Thank you. So it's a tie. So let us see after the discussion what would be the correct answer. Uh, so till then, wait for us. And uh, now I'd like to request our today's presenter, Dr. Asma Siddika, to present her case. Over to you, Dr. Asma Siddika. Appa, you need to uh, share your screen. Is it okay, Shaman? Yes, uh, you just need to make it full screen. Okay. Thanks, the organizer, for inviting me to be here as a presenter. And um, I feel proud to say something in this prestigious platform. Respected chairperson and learned audience, assalamu alaikum and good evening. Today, my topic is chemotherapy in management of advanced gastric cancer. Okay. Outline of, the, of my presentation will be aim of the treatment, then I will give some deep description about the chemotherapy tick as in, then go for first line regime, then second and third line regime. Lastly, there will be some take home messages. 
first of all, let's see what are the recommendation of chemotherapy in management of gastric cancer. As all we know, chemotherapy has an important role in the management of gastric cancer. We can use chemotherapy as perioperative setting, neoadjuvant, adjuvant setting, also along with in radiation concurrent setting and palliative setting. Everything except palliative setting is discussed in, in previous session. I will uh, give some idea regarding the palliative setting. So, who are the candidates for the palliative chemotherapy? Obviously, the patient of undesectable locally advanced disease and patient of recurrent disease and metastatic disease are the candidates for palliative chemotherapy. And this is also described in um, NCCN guideline. Where lo in local regional disease, where not, no, no, for non surgical candidates, palliative management is indicated by them. Also, palliative management is indicated in metastatic disease. NCCN guideline also recommends the palliative management for local regional recurrences. Before starting of palliative therapy, patient assessment is very important. Assessment of the patient is uh, patient assessment should be done on performance status, nutritional status, and previous treatment history. NCCN guideline also emphasizes regarding the current, uh, performance status. When performance status is equal to more than 60, or ego performance status is equal to less than two, then we will prescribe systemic chemotherapy for the patient of undesectable locally advanced or locally recurrent or metastatic patients. We uh, prescribe palliative therapy in the intention of to improve overall survival, to prolong time of progression, to control symptoms, and improve quality of life. This is a paper published by B. Limilas. They compared the, uh, this is a randomized control trial, and they compared the patients uh, of, uh, with base supportive care in one group and another group in base supportive care and chemotherapy. And results showed chemotherapy group had an improved or prolonged high quality of life for a minimum of four months compared to those with base supportive care. This is another, RC, another meta analysis which includes 11,698 patients from 60 RCT. They have um, shown different aspects of chemotherapy for advanced gastric cancer. Different issue, um, issue is uh, of advanced uh, different issue of chemotherapy in advanced gastric cancer are described in this in this meta analysis. They also found chemotherapy extends overall survival by approximately six to seven months for um, more than base supportive care. So what are the agents we used as palliative settings? Five classes of cytotoxic agents are extremely extensively studied and found effective. These are antimetabolites, heavy metals, taxins, chemotoxins, and antibiotics. Antimetabolites, 5 4 and X3 oral analog also tested in different settings. Among the five people, extensively studied, five people is extensively studied as a single agent and, uh, and combination agent. And uh, response rate is 21%. Oral analog, that is the EFT S1 capsaicin, also used and found 26% uh, for EFT response rate, 49% for S1 response rate, and 26% response rate in capsaicin, uh, for capsaicin. But all these responses are more in Japanese and, and Asian people, but it is lower in European peoples. Toxicity of the 5 4 is mucositis, diarrhea, mild myelosuppression. Among the platinum, auxiliary platinum extensively studied and found preferred over cisplatin due to lower toxicity. Cisplatin has overall response rate 50%, carboplatin less studied and has less effective in management of advanced gastric cancer, and toxicity are nausea, vomiting, peripheral neuropathy, autotoxicity, and nephrotoxicity. Among the toxins, dosicacin more extensively studied and found overall response rate is 19%. And as we know, um, toxicity of docetaxel is neutropenia, alopecia, edema, and allergic reaction. Among ironotican is used as a single or combination agent. Overall response rate is 15 to 20%. Toxicity is myelosuppression and diarrhea. Among the anthracycline, epirubicin are extensively studied and shown. Overall response rate is 17% and they have cardiotoxicity. Entering into a, a, after a decision for palliative chemotherapy, we will first enter into the first line of CT. And if there is any progression or any side effect develops, and then we go move to the second line CT, thereafter, third line, and subsequent treatment. 
these are the NCCM guidelines which describes the what are the CT agents we use in fast line therapy. There are some preferred helical regimes and there are some recommended regimes. Here we see that if there is um, patient is positive for HER2, then trastuzumab should be added in first line CT. And single agent CT, that is the docetaxel, carbapatine, and 5 toroidin are used as a category B recommendation in NCCN guideline. Regarding the CT agents, there are many trials. Here are some important uh, trials which describe the different issue of first line regime. Uh, first line regime. This is flag trial. Which compared, uh, which is a randomized control trial and um, includes the one, 1029 patients into two arms. One arm on, on is cisplatin and 5 b another arm is cisplatin and S1, which is a oral analog of 5 b and they showed the median overall survival of 7.9 months in 5 b cisplatin arm and uh, 8.6 months in S1 and cisplatin arm. And we found that. Oral 5 b is not inferior to intravenous 5 b Toxicity is also less in cisplatin and S1 arm. So oral 5 b is non-inferior to IV 5 b This meta-analysis shows the um, uh, comparison between the capsitabine and capsi caps uh, oral capsitabine and 5 b um, This meta-analysis included uh, the patients from real 2 trial and ML17032 trial. And uh, they included uh, 1,318 uh, 1, patients of gastric and gastroesophageal junction cancer. Primary and secondary endpoints are overall survival and progression P survival, um, survival. And then they found that median overall survival is 285 days for 5 bp arm and 322 days for capsidabine arm. And there was no significant difference of observed in progression P survival. So, in conclusion, we can say overall survival was more suitable in capsidabine arm. This is also a meta-analysis which compared the um, efficacy of oxaliplatin versus cisplatin. Here, two, uh, 2000, uh, 20, two, 2,297 patients of advanced gastric and cancer from seven RCTs included. They compared the patients in cisplatin-based regime as an oxaliplatin-based regime. And results showed that there was improved partial response rate in oxaliplatin arm, hematoxaliplatin toxicity higher in cisplatin group. So we can conclude that oxaliplatin-based regime has an obvious advantage over cisplatin-based regime. This chart shows the uh, difference of survival advantage of uh, PD versus ESF in advanced gastric cancer. The, uh, here, the green one, green one is Falperi, clearly shown there is an advantage over ECF over fal Falperi. This is also a phase three study of cisplatin versus, dos uh, versus DCF. We, if we add DCF, uh, docetaxel to cisplatin, there is obviously increased uh, um, this in, in, in this over, overall survival in DCF arm. Uh, here um, uh, we show DCF arm median survival is 9.2 months, whereas in cisplatin and 5 bpo arm, it is 8.6 months. So in fit patient, we can add docetaxel alone uh, to cisplatin and 5 bpo at first line setting. This, this is real to trial which compare the capsitabine with 5A2 and oxaliplatin with, with cisplatin. Here, yeah, 1,002 patients for advanced gastric and gastric esophageal cancer are included. They randomized patients into four arms. If you be seen cisplatin 5A2, if you will be seen cisplatin capsitabine, if you will be seen oxaliplatin 5A2, if you will be seen oxaliplatin and capsitabine. And overall, the survival shows more in if you be seen oxaliplatin and capsitabine arm, that is 11.2 months. So conclusion is that capsitabine and oxaliplatin are as effective as 5 bo and cisplatin. This is a German study group trial. Uh, this is a RCT, which compared the 5 fluorodicyl leucoferrin and oxaliplatin, that is FLO with 5 bo leucoferrin and, and cisplatin, that FLP. Primary endpoint was progression fee survival. Progression fee survival in FLO, that is in oxaliplatin arm, is 5.8 months, and in FLP arm, it is 3.9 months. So, result is improved median progression fee survival and low toxicity in FLO arm, no significant median overall differences, but a subgroup analysis of FLO showed improved efficacy in older patients, more than 65 years age group patients. So, and um, this is also a, a meta-analysis, uh, which include the 11,698 patients and include the 64 RCTs. They showed the 
combination chemotherapy extend overall survival slightly increases versus single as an they compare the single as an versus um, combined as an they showed the combination chemotherapy extends overall survival slightly but an additional month versus single as an chemotherapy so single as an so combination chemotherapy will provide significant survival advantage compared to single as an chemotherapy it has obviously higher response rate and toxicity and treatment related mortality is though higher but these are not statistically significant this is stoker trial which addresses the addition of hard to and hard uh, anti hard to that is trastuzumab in first line or second line chemotherapy or in chemotherapy and they found trastuzumab in combination with chemotherapy can be considered as a new standard option for patients with hard to positive advanced gastric or gastroesophageal junction cancer so we can summarize and regime as first in for in first line regime preferred regime is fu uh, fluoropyrimidine that is either fibicure capsaicin or platinum that is cisplatin or oxaloplatin combination capsaicin is non inferior to fibicure oxaloplatin preferred over cisplatin due to lower toxicity enotecan based regime also recommended in first line therapy due to higher toxicity dcf or dcf uh, higher toxicity we can uh, dcf modification also recommended as first line This slide I taken from the ESMO 2020 preceptorship program, and here we see the uh, see the median overall survival in, among the CT schedules. This is an important slide, and we see the uh, capsaicin and oxaloplatin are it is um, it is uh, demonstrated from attraction for trial. Seventeen overall survival is more that that is seventeen point. something nice and trastuzumab plus cisplatin and fibrin that is in a in two trial which includes the trastuzumab in alon with combination it showed 13.8 months and it will be seen oxaloplatin and capsaicin that shown in the real trial 11.2 months oxaloplatin and fibrin give 10.7 months similarly if we use docetaxel and cisplatin fibrin or provides 9.2 months overall survival and um, five few monotherapy 7 months and best supportive care only provide 4 months median overall survival so first line ct uh, we can see tumor response occur in only 20 to 30% cases complete clinical response is uncommon progression to survival is 3.7 to 4.1 months median overall survival ranges from 7.2 to 8.6 months Two year survival was between seven to ten percent. Two drug combination is preferred. Three drugs are, are made for medically fit patient. Single agent are category two B recommendation as a first line regime. Now second line regime. What are the preferred um, pre preferred category one regime for second line therapy is dos either docetaxel or paclitaxel or aronetecan. we can add targeted therapy as a single agent or combination with chemotherapy as a preferred regime in second line chemotherapy this is cogat two trial it is a randomized phase three study which is shown that docetaxel versus active simple that is the best um, supportive care in advanced gastric gadino uh, carcinoma patients and their interpretation was Docetaxel can be recommended as an appropriate second-line treatment for patients with esophagogastric carcinoma that is refractory to treatment with platinum and fluoropyrimidine. This is another study which also shows the effective effectivity of enotecan as a second-line therapy. And an interpretation is enotecan as a second-line line chemotherapy significantly prolonged overall survival compared to best supportive care in in studied patients. Second-line chemotherapy can be considered as a proven treatment option for metastatic or locally advanced gastric cancer. This is NCCN guideline, which which shows the uh, the light regarding the second line chemotherapy. Uh, here we see the preferred clinical regime and other recommended regime. Preferred regime are either paclitaxel, sigillazine, docetaxel, or enotecan, and, and targeted therapy or immunotherapy also as acts as a preferred regime here, along with paclitaxel as a single agent. Now third line or subsequent regime. Triprodine and tiraxel is category one recommendation as a third line or subsequent regime. Triprodine is a nucleoside inhibitor and and tiraxel is a thymidine phosphorylase inhibitor. They marketed as a tablet and serve 
doses 35 mg per meter square dose per meter square orally twice daily day 1 to 5 and day 8 to day 12 and this this is recommended um, uh, on uh, based on the text trial which is a phase 3 randomized double blind placebo control trial which randomized five, uh, 507 patients into two is to one arm one arm is non sera plus best supportive care another arm is best supportive care and result found that overall survival was 5.7 months in non sera group and 3.6 months in best supportive care group and this is also recommendation uh, from NCCN regarding the third line systemic chemotherapy. They recommended the triclorotin and anhalic and, atipiracil of third line or subsequent aliki therapy. Also, pembrolizumab for third line and subsequent therapy, they recommended. Regarding toxicity profile, toxicity is usually cons consistent and tolerable and managed by supportive care. So my take home messages are chemotherapy improves overall survival and progression to survival in palliative settings. Treatment should start on the basis of performance status, toxicity of drugs, and from previous treatment history. First line chemotherapy with 5-APU and platinum doublet is preferred. Triplet combination with docetaxel may be considered in fit patient. As an alternative, Falpiri and modified DCF also recommended in first line. Second line chemotherapy also prolongs survival with good performance status patient. Single as an use is category one recommendation. We can use also um, combined if patient performance status is good. Third line chemotherapy with tablet non-sub also prolongs survival. Hard two status to be determined in advanced gastric patient. If positive, trust to may to be added in first line or second line settings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asma Siddhika. Thank you uh, for your uh, brilliant presentation. Uh, I've seen that you have tried to cover every point regarding these uh, issues. Uh, now, I would like to request our participants to ask their question in the chat box. Uh, by this time, let us discuss this issue in a defined way. Uh, so, Asma, can you please uh, off your screen sharing? So uh, today we, have, we will discuss this case and I hope that uh, it will uh, cover all the related questions regarding this topic. So this is a 60 years old man, is a businessman, uh, presented with abdominal discomfort, uh, very type of pain. And unfortunately, endoscopy proves that uh, he has an ulcer in his stomach, biopsy, diffuse type of adenocarcinoma, during this staging CT scan, ascites and peritoneal acid leaks found. So this is a CT scan. You can see that this ascites over there, and there's a, a curvature growth. You can see. So now the question uh, to our overseas expert, Dr. Chahad Khan, and later we will discuss with our uh, presenter. So at first, what would be the intention of treatment of this patient? So what is the objective of uh, objective of treating this patient, Dr. Zayedka? Uh, thank you, Dr. Shumun. Can I please uh, first congratulate uh, Dr. Asma Siddika? That was a beautiful presentation covering uh, most of the aspects uh, of palliative chemotherapy in uh, gastric cancer. So thank you very much. That was a refreshing for me, uh, remembering all those historical trials and also leading to the more recent ones. So coming to this uh, question uh, is, um, what is the preferred option for this patient? Before I go into these options, can I just start with something that obviously the gastric cancer we all know comes with such an appalling prognosis when we are dealing with the advanced uh, metastatic or inoperable cancer. And, and one thing very important that while we know that the chemotherapy has got a modest benefit in prolonging survival, but at the end of the day, that is not massive as we have seen in many, many other solid cancers. So the goal of therapy is important. The most important thing is quality of life. And that's what we need to keep in mind. So what we do know that a surgery in inoper inoperable or metastatic setting is unfortunately uh, not appropriate. Uh, it doesn't offer any uh, significant benefit in uh, prolonging survival. 
uh, neither it offers any benefit in improving quality of life significantly unless you've got a bleeding tumor or you've got an obstructive tumor that you cannot manage with uh, stents. Uh, so I would disregard the first two options, the gastrectomy, uh, and obviously the second one is even more um, extensive surgery. Now, I understand that surgery has got a big role uh, in the Far East Asia. Uh, however, that's not very common in the Western uh, population in Europe and North America. So again, I would be keen to hear uh, the, uh, the comments from uh, the uh, other panelists, uh, but I would, from my experience and from my uh, practice, uh, I would not recommend any surgery. So that comes uh, the systemic chemotherapy, which is obviously is going to be my preferred option. However, I would combine that with the next option, which is best supportive care. So the best supportive care and chemotherapy both together uh, would be my preferred option because we already know from Dr. Siddika's presentation that number one, uh, chemotherapy plus best supportive care is better than best supportive care uh, alone. And the final option is gastrectomy plus systemic chemotherapy. The only reason if I would ever go for that route would be if there is active bleeding that cannot be managed or an obstructive tumor that cannot be managed by, uh, by stent. Uh, that would be the option to consider a bypass surgery or whatever the surgeons feel would be the uh, least restrictive option for the patient. Uh, that will be my answer. Thank you. So um, if I can uh, summarize your uh, suggestions, your decisions. Uh, so uh, the objective of treatment is definitely quality of life. First, second, uh, definitely this palliative chemotherapy is going to give some overall survival. Uh, surgery is not a preferred option. So, uh, usually, uh, do you have any different opinion regarding this? I am. I'm, I know that you are not a gastric cancer specialist, but uh, if you want to add something regarding this issue, are you in favor of surgery? Okay, thank you, Mustafa. Um, my opinion is uh, uh, totally agree with uh, Doctor. Uh, I'm sorry. So, his opinion. I'm very agree with him, and. Uh, um, the, the best supportive care is an uh, um, important option, but uh, I think the, the 60 years old male is, uh, mine is uh, the relatively young and uh, the PS1 is uh, the relatively good PS. And uh, I think sometimes the, um, so, uh, the symptom from the psychis is a uh, little bit difficult to control only by best supportive care. So sometimes the system chemotherapy reduces the ascites and uh, the system chemotherapy can, be, can improve the quality of life too. So my, um, my opinion is uh, number three, system chemotherapy. So thank you. Uh, in, the, in the poll, we have seen that uh, among our participants, most of them are decided with the system chemotherapy. So we are all, all are in the uh, same board. So this is the regular trial. This is a Japanese trial. They have tried to answer this question. Uh, so why not to give gastrectomy uh, before, uh, before giving chemotherapy? And they found that the median survival with surgery, uh, not only non-inferior, but with surgery, it is less than only systemic chemotherapy. So uh, from this study, this is a randomized control trial, we can have an idea that surgery is not the answer for this sort of question. In the group. So we are all in a... Uh, similar platform that is the systemic chemotherapy. Now, my question to Dr. Uh, Jahid Khan, Dr. Asma Appa. Uh, so if we are planned for systemic chemotherapy, what should be our protocol? It is single agent, doublet or triplet or more. So at first I would like to hear from Dr. Asma Siddika. Thank you, Shoman, for your question. Uh, I think uh, is performance status is good and patient age is 60 years, we can consider first line uh, therapy that is in doublet therapy. And if performance doublet, doublet therapy. What, what, of, what is it? What is it? Combination of uh, 5 APO, uh, 5 APO and platinum combination. So you are preferred for cisplatinum and 5 APO, right? Yeah. 
We can use it. All are preferred using cisplatin five vivo oxalopet. We can also use in Jalox schedule. If performance stress is good, we can use triplet regime. That is, we can add uh, DCF and uh, to cisplatin and five vivo. Okay, so they are different. Depends upon the depends upon the performance status of the patient. Okay, so I have mentioned that his performance status is equal to one. So what's your specific answer? What well, I know there are different options. There are different type of doublets. So which what which regime you are going to pick? It is history and five before. No, the performance status is good. Then I will go for triplet. That is the DCF. Okay. DCF so if the or or two drug combination gelox. Okay, again, there is two, two options. So I, I want to hear from you. So pick just one. So he's uh, performance status one and uh, metastatic uh, stomach cancer. So what's your uh, first pick? It, is it DCF or Zelox? Obviously, my first pick will be a Zelox for our setting. Okay, why? Uh, it is easy to restart, first of all. Side effect is less. And um, uh, one study we saw that there is a median survival is more. Fair enough. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. Jahid Khan. So, for a performance status one, a young patient with no no other comorbidity, uh, my preference would be oxaliplatin and capsizabine or oxaliplatin uh, with five of you. Uh, th this will be my preference. I'm more comfortable treating people with capsizabine, so that will be that will be my preference. And my reason would be that what Dr. Siddika has already showed through all the meta-analyses that uh, number one, you can safely uh, replace his platinum with oxaliplatin with fewer side effects. Uh, six platinum is more myelotoxic, uh, more nephrotoxic, uh, more autotoxic, and the electrolyte imbalance from the cis platin is really difficult to manage when it starts happening. Uh, and we also, we have already seen from the meta-analysis that oxaliplatin provides fewer side effects without uh, affecting the progression for survival or overall survival. In the same way, we also know that capsitabine uh, can replace 5-FU. And again, uh, I am not a big fan of peak line. And if I can avoid peak line, that is usually my preference because it comes with this infection, uh, DVT, and all other risks. Uh, so again, I, my preference would be capsitabine over 5-FU. And it is not restricted to upper GI cancer. Uh, we know from capsitabine-based uh, meta-analysis that capsitabine has actually has got a better uh, clinical efficiency over 5-FU. Some might argue that it is also a little bit more toxic over 5-FU, uh, but again, it depends on the tolerance of the patient. Now, the next question is, do you go for a doublet over a triplet, or do you choose doublet over a single line, single agent? The, the latter one is easier to answer. We already know that doublet treatment is actually better than single agent treatment when it comes to progression for survival and overall survival. So for a fit patient, that will be an automatic choice. The next question is a bit more difficult to answer, whether it's any better than the triplet agents. Now, DCF is not something very common in UK. Uh, we have been historically using ECF, uh, EOX. Uh, uh, so, so we have used a combination of oxaliplatin versus fluoropyrimidine versus uh, platinum fluoropyrimidine and an anthracycline. What we already know that anthracycline actually doesn't offer any significant benefit compared to oxaliplatin and a fluoropyrimidine combination. So on that basis, I'll, I'll, my choice would be oxaliplatin plus a fluoropyrimidine. Uh, so thank you, Zahid Bhai. So if uh, triplet is not uh, going to give any advantages, I'm not sure. Uh, so there are some different right. trial. Yeah, Mamun. One way. I want to another option. Okay. Please, according, to, according to Avagas trial, cisplatin 5 FU and Bevacizumab versus cisplatin 5 FU showed that overall survival 12.1 months versus 10.1 months. And the progression free survival was 6.7 months versus 5.3 months. Here we can consider triple uh, triplet uh, drug like this protein fiber okay, and I got, I, okay i got your point so you are so you are uh, raising your issues regarding the bay so we will come later uh, so uh, uh, so there are there are some european studies they have tried that uh, uh, trying with docetaxel cisplatin that is called the so called flot trial uh, though they have mentioned it is tf trial 
they have found that the response rate is quite high and uh, even the overall survival rate is moderately high so uh, what are those group whom you can consider this triplet or even the flot resin so is there any subgroups whom you can really consider this trial this protocol uh, thank you shumant the, the one controversial area in upper gi cancer is can you go for conversion therapy for those people uh, who might have a, a, a apparently inoperable cancer uh, or locally advanced cancer, and uh, you think that if it can be downstaged, an operation might be an option. Now, this is not a very popular idea or in practice in UK. So again, if any cancer has been staged as inoperable on the MDT, uh, then actually the only treatment option we would offer is um, uh, uh, palliative chemotherapy. However, it's not completely unreasonable. And if you have a non-metastatic patient, uh, who seems borderline operable on the staging investigations, and the patient is young, otherwise fit, good performance status, and you want to give this patient the uh, best chance, then I suppose offering a triplet chemotherapy is not unreasonable. And that reminds me that you actually have another triplet option of falfidinox, where you give oxaliplatin, irinotecan with a fluoropyrimidine, uh, and that again provides a significant uh, benefit in terms of the response rate, but the data is a phase two trial. If I can remember, the numbers of patients were very limited. Uh, and uh, so it hasn't been widely accepted. Let's go back to the very fundamental thing, what I've said, that at the end of the day, the benefit in improving the overall survival with a triplet is still very marginal, okay? It's still within the time of weeks to a couple of months. So how much trouble you want to put a patient through for that little extra benefit. And if you put everything into first line treatment, you will have nothing to treat in second line setting. Okay. So if you use the, both the platinum and the taxane in the first line setting, what will you use in second line? Or if you use falfirinox and, 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 and uh, uh, if the patient progresses or relapses in future, what will be your option after that? Uh, so putting all these things into consideration, I think I will try to avoid uh, triplet treatment uh, in, in the practice that we do in UK. Thank you, Zahid Bhai. Uh, so it is already shown by uh, Asma Apa. You can see that this Capox regime uh, in attract four in one arm. Uh, they have shown that, that the Capox produced 17.5 months overall survival benefit. And EOX, uh, though the Western are not very considered about this epirubicin right now, but still it has 11.2 months overall survival and uh, DCF resume in two months. So we, this is a very reasonable option to choice about this k regime considering its toxicity profile. Uh, so we have planned accordingly with this k regime. After two cycles, this patient improved. CT scan showed partial response with decrease in ascites. We, was, we was, at the time, we were a little bit enthusiastic regarding the outcome. But unfortunately, after four cycles, patients started to complain regarding these symptoms. And as well as we have done a repeat scan and we show that we have lost the trace. And again, the asset is progressed. So you can see this is the beginning scan. After the scan, there was a little bit of regression. But after four cycles, again, there is a progression of this ascites with symptoms. Now, what to do? Dr. Asma Siddiqat. Clearly, I will shift as the disease is progressed. I will shift to second line CT. What What would be the result? Single agent, preferably single agent. Which which isn't? Dos preferably docetaxel. Okay, so you are preferred for uh, single agent docetaxel. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Zaid Bhai. Um, I, I've just noted a question from uh, Lima. Uh, uh, do we consider histological subtypes in selecting uh, the chemotherapy protocol? Can I just quickly touch that? So we, we assume, we coming, the, we we assume this patient is adenocarcinoma and HER2 negative. Okay. So considering this is HER2 negative and adenocarcinoma, uh, as Dr. Siddika has suggested, the options are uh, a taxin, which could be docetaxel, pactitaxel. Uh, you could go for irinotecan as a single agent or irinotecan with a fluoropyrimidine. Uh, there is also option of ramikirumab uh, with a taxin, uh, palkitaxel. 
So you've got quite a few options. Uh, considering uh, in UK, ramikirumab is not funded, not available within NHS. Uh, so my option would be uh, a taxin, and my preferred option is weekly paclitaxel, because again, from our institutional experience, weekly paclitaxel is better tolerated uh, for patients over three weekly docetaxel. Uh, remember, there is no significant benefit in the PFS or overall survival between the two. Okay. Uh, so you, you, you prefer for Paclitexel. What about NAB, NAB or Paclitexel? Uh, again, NAB Paclitexel is not funded within NHS in UK. So my preference would be Paclitexel, weekly Paclitexel. Uh, so regarding the Rainbow trial, they have tried with uh, NAB Paclitexel with Ramicurumab. Uh, so still you are, uh, <coughs> you are in with only Paclitexel. Why not the combination therapy? Uh, again, if, if I have the option to treat, as I've said, my limitation within UK is what is funded within the NHS. Uh, so Ramicurubab is not funded with NHS, uh, but obviously if the a patient can afford and uh, you have the availability, uh, uh, there's nothing, no reason not to try that. Okay. So uh, we, we have come to a consensus that our second line option would be a single agent, uh, a single agent regarding the consideration of toxicity profile. Uh, but do you think at this time we should do this test regarding our further <coughs> proceedings? As you have assumed it, it is hard to, hard to test negative. And, but do, do you think that we should go for the immunistic chemistry for uh, D-dimer or PCR for MSI? So ideally this, this test should be done at the diagnostic staging. Uh, so before the first line treatment, we would have known what is the hard to status of the patient. And... Uh, we would have known, though it has not again has become a generalized practice in UK, but I suspect outside nationally funded healthcare system, you would go for uh, MMR testing and MSI testing. Uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, Dr. Siddika has very briefly covered that pembrolizumab uh, is actually uh, approved in USA as a letter line of treatment. Uh, it is approved as a uh, I think third line treatment, and also one of the attraction, it was it attraction two trial where nivolumab has been uh, tested as a second line treatment. Now the question is, what is the benefit of PD-1 uh, blocker in adenocarcinoma? I don't think that the trials have adequately answered that question. We know that the benefit is clear in SCC or squamous cell cancer. We know that the benefit is clear when you have a D-dimer uh, patient, D, sorry, DMMR patient. Uh, the, and we know that when you have the CPS score of more than 10, uh, you have the benefit of, again, immunotherapy in those cases. But there are a number of trials uh, between both checkmate and, um, uh, sorry, this is difficult to remember the numbers. Uh, what, what's the, what's the one? Seven, probably. Yeah. Uh, so be, between these trials, I don't think adenocarcinoma, it has been definitely proven that immunotherapy has gotten a significant role. Uh, uh, so again, um, uh, our practice in US, UK would be not to offer any immunotherapy in this setting. Having said that, uh, having said that, we have an option called Cancer Drug Fund, which is outside the C, uh, NHS funding. And the Cancer Drug Fund allows to use nivolumab in deficient MMR patient or MSI high patient who has progressed through the first line chemotherapy, but it is not nationally funded yet. So uh, what we can get from your message that we sh if we want to do this test, we should do at the beginning of our first line therapy, right Jayantai? Absolutely. Okay. So, if it, so uh, do you uh, suggest us to make it our routine practice if we got a, a metastatic stomach cancer, we should do uh, HR2 test before going. So uh, should, it, should we do it regularly? As a Absolutely. Uh, HAR2 is a standard procedure in UK. So HAR2 will be done at the diagnostic st staging. One we have, once we've confirmed the patient is not a surgical candidate, then HAR2 will be done as a routine practice. Uh, regard, regarding the MMR and MSI, uh, it is not yet into the practice. But now we know from the uh, pembrolizumab and nivolumab data that uh, European Medical Agency has approved Premolizumab, and they have also approved Nivalumab. So it is becoming becoming a practice uh, to test it at the time of the diagnostic staging. 
So it is a statement to, for us. Uh, so if, if we if you consider it as a uh, stage four stomach cancer, metastasis stomach cancer, we should do the heart septin uh, HRT test. Uh, so uh, we are not very familiar with this test, particularly for stomach cancer. We are familiar with breast cancer, but I think we should change our practice. We should focus this HRT status in stomach cancer also. So we have uh, <clears throat> done this test to our patient and uh, ultimately it comes with HER2 negative and microcellular stable patient. So what to do? So we have discussed all these issues and um, both our uh, faculties are uh, agreed with single agent packlet Excel. So what I am going to see over here, don't take it as a example. It is done by a, a overseas center. They have planned for fall field, but interestingly, they found a very good result. No ascites weight increased after six cycles. CT scan showed very good response. So this this is a, a different type of scenario. Don't cons, cons, don't cons, 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 consider these things as a that a, a, a answer of answer of fall free as a progressed disease. Uh, so what to do? So if these things came to in a routine practice, if your patient responded very well. So after six cycles of your design chemotherapy, you have found that an extraordinary result you have got. So what you are going to do in these settings? Jahid Bhai. Okay, so, so the question is, uh, can you consider surgery in this situation? Very controversial question. The, 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 to answer that question, there is no trial to support it. If the patient is upfront inoperable or metastatic, then I don't think there ever be any question of a, a curative resection surgery ever in future, uh, unless there is a reason to do it for palliative reason, which you've discussed before, like a bleeding, like uh, an obstruction that you cannot manage in a non-surgical uh, non way. Uh, so the, my answer is there'll be no surgery. The second question is, do you carry on the chemotherapy that has been working or do you do a stop and start treatment? Again, there is no clinical trial to support what to do. If the patient is tolerating the treatment, I think the reasonable thing would be to carry on the chemotherapy as long as it's tolerable uh, uh, and, uh, and stop when it is, no, it is not providing any further clinical benefit. However, in UK, uh, traditionally or historically, we are more used to stop and start treatment. Uh, in contrast to uh, North America, where the treatment is likely to be more continuous. So again, uh, in a lot of our cancer centers, uh, we would stop treatment after six cycles and reinstitute treatment if there is evidence of progression again. Okay, uh, so you, you, you prefer for continuing this chemotherapy, uh, which is giving a good result and until the toxicity allows, right? Yeah. So that is the that is the uh, debate right now to resect or not resect in metastatic gas, gastric cancer. Uh, so you can see, so they have found that the, if we can go, go for a complete cytoreduction, this is the volume of tumor that is kept rest, we could have a better probability of survival, though it is a very uh, debatable issues. But at the same time, they have found a very interesting index that is peritoneal carcinomatosis index, PCI. And they tried to find out the volume of lesion in the uh, scans. And if the tumor size is 0 0.5 centimeter, the score is at a one, five cent more than five, up to five centimeter, two, more than five centimeter, three. And they have <clears throat> mentioned it in this, in this name and they score it. And they found that if the peritoneal carcinoma index is zero to six, that is the low burden disease, that the probability of survival is a bit high. So I am very agreed with Jaitan's answer. <coughs> so still it is not a, uh, <coughs> not a concluded issues. It is a still a issues of debate, but this is the area we can check that how much volume we have left after the uh, design chemotherapy. So let me uh, summarize our discussion. And again, we will try to see some questions in the chat box. So as in a stomach cancer, in a metastatic setting, doublet chemotherapy is the preferred refs regime. Uh, platinum is the backbone, and 5 a 2 definitely 5 a 4 capsidabin we can consider. Triplet chemotherapy with docetaxel may be considered in feed group of patients. 
but at the same time i want to highlight two study that is the geo2 study jai bhai could you could you uh, give some uh, output regarding this study this is a very interesting findings i think i would like to hear from you yeah so this is a this is actually a, a practical study that's yeah. the first comment i will say that when you deal with upper gi cancers actually most of your patients are frail unwell because of the symptom burdens and uh, to find a performance status 0 to 1 uh, is is actually only very few numbers of patients and you, you also have a lot of patients who are elderly who's got cardiac comorbidity uh, and uh, uh, managing their uh, comorbidities and put and taking them through the chemotherapy is a big deal so oeo2 trial was done uh, with three doses of oxaliplatin capcitabine 100% 80% and 60% and and what it is shown that actually let's go by one by one so between the 100% and 80% 100% was better both from safety profile and from clinical benefit the between the 80% and 60% 60% is better than 80% and between the 100% and 60% 60% is as good as 100% that is a kind of bottom line so that has actually changed our practice so if we have an elderly patient ps2 patient uh, or we are borderline one uh, then uh, my preference or actually my colleagues all of our preference would be to go by the 60% oxaliplatin capcitabine dose uh, to treat them uh, which is a slightly better option than treating them with a single agent treatment Shimon, if you have any further comment on that, <clears throat> thank you, Jayad. That, 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 that is the main issue I like to highlight. That the treating our patients with low dose very bad, actually, and it, it is in the study it proves that giving in low dose might be sometimes beneficial. There is another study they have tried in the space to trial that the docetaxel dose, forty percent, forty gram docetaxel is going to produce better outcome than seventy-four milligram per meter square. Along with and that the low dose regime might be as good, not only as good, might be sometimes beneficial to your patients. So we, we really we need to look in the, into these issues. Uh, so regarding the second line, still single agent paclitaxel, or you could think some immunotherapy, and standard third lines. I am not sure about these things. And if you find your patient hard to positive, definitely you should. Consider this kind of transfusion therapy. That's all from me. So I need to uh, take some question from uh, from the chat box. So is there any immunotherapy approved for first line in metastatic gastric cancer? So uh, prembolizumab, and and uh, I suspect there is another session on immunotherapy, isn't it? So yes, uh, yes, in next, uh, in next session. So I avoided making any comments on that. Uh, so yes, pembrolizumab and nivolumab, there are two options, um, both with chemotherapy. Uh, they can be used as a single agent, but they are, they are not as good as when compared with chemotherapy together. And there is some argument that if you have a non-bulky, uh, minimally symptomatic tumor, you could go for a single agent immunotherapy. Uh, but if you have a large volume disease or metastatic burden, symptomatic patients, you need a quick response, uh, then immunotherapy alone uh, is probably not the best idea. Uh, so yes, the immunotherapy has, has a role in both first line, second line, and even third line setting from the clinical trials that we have. And if you have a fit patient, if you have a squamous cell cancer, which is supposed you will not get in gastric cancer, uh, 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 if you send like a, a lower esophageal cancer, then you can use uh, uh, immunotherapy. The question is, is the, what is the role of immunotherapy in adenocarcinoma? And as I've said that trials are conflicting. In some trials, there is some benefit. Uh, in some trials, uh, it hasn't proven any benefit, whether you have a, a PD, a CPS score more than five uh, or even 10. So that's a questionable thing. Uh, but more trials are being done, and I'm sure we'll we'll get the answer. But the, to again to answer the question in short, yes, there is a role of immunotherapy with chemotherapy, not alone probably. Thank you, Zaidi. Hopefully, we'll discuss in details in our next session. Uh, so I have not seen so much question in the chat box. So is there any question from the audience? Uh, if there is any question, any suggestions, any recommendations, they can answer it directly. 
So is there anyone interested yes, to comment in here? I am Professor Mukhandal. I want to tell yeah. something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, please. Uh, particularly to Professor Jahid, uh, how do you practice EOX? How much you give this uh, capsitabine? Do you administer continuously or two weeks on, one week off? Uh, so good question. Um, we use uh, so 21 day cycle and the capsitabine is a continuous treatment over 21 days. Right. Actually, I have a study, though it's a, a small study, but I have shown that if we give two weeks on and one week off, that gives respite to the patient. The toxicities are less, but the efficacy is almost equal. There is no significant difference between the uh, uh, dose, uh, these two schedules. And I, I, I submitted this paper to Singapore uh, GI conference and they appreciated it. And Tuo Han Chong, which, who is one of the most famous gastroenterological oncologist, uh, he practices in uh, National Cancer Center. He said, he just came to my ear and said, Mufazel, honestly, I do the same thing that you are doing. That means 650 milligram per meter squared BD for two weeks on and one week off, not continuous three weeks. So that is the uh, comment I had to make and sh to share uh, my practice, what I, I do actually. Thank you, sir, for sharing your uh, experience. Okay, Jaitri. I think that's a reasonable option to do uh, if people are not tolerating, but it, it don't be a normal practice in uh, UK because we do have the option of uh, reducing the dose to 60% uh, if there is any problem with the side effects and tolerance. Thank you. Uh, I, okay, now I proceed with our uh, formal discussion. Now, <clears throat> I would like to request our academic secretary, Dr. A.F.M. Kamal Bin, sir, to say a few words Hi. regarding this today's discussion. Dr. A.F.M. Kamal Bin, sir. Thank you, Shoban. Were there any comments from uh, Dr. Yuji from Japan? Did we ask him? Yuji, uh, would you like to give any comment regarding our discussion? Your final comment. Quick comments, then we... Please unmute yourself, Dr. Yuji. Well, thank you. Uh, that's a very nice uh, discussion. And uh, so, you know, the recently the, there are many uh, new agents for gastric cancer. So, especially the, not only uh, fast line therapy. So, recently the, the nivolumab or pembrolizumab combination with the chemotherapy will be approved. And uh, so, the recently the other agents. Uh, for example, um, how to positive gastric cancer, um, the trastuzumab, um, uh, what, what's that, what's that, DS? DS yes. Yeah, deruxtecan. Deruxtecan, yeah. That's a very um, important uh, role, that, that plays a very important role in gastric cancer, has a positive gastric cancer. So. Um, but now we have many clinical questions. How, how, uh, so, which which drug is uh, best for uh, uh, for which patient? So, so we should be um, we sh we should do many clinical trials for uh, about that. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so. <laughs> I, I'm I was very happy to join this meeting. So yeah, thanks, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Uzi. I, I, I would like to hear from your uh, your expertise domain, that is the urological malignancy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Thank you, Dr. Uzi. Thank you. Uh, I mean, uh, it was always good to listen to a Japanese colleague about gastric cancer because this discussion will never end unless you listen to Japan because it is gastric cancer. They have a signature on gastric cancer. So. I mean, uh, thanks uh, for the wonderful discussion. I mean, to Asma, Zahid, and Shumon. I think uh, in GI, probably gastric cancer is a bit different, where we are always chasing with the dose. GI, there is a inborn scope to reduce the dose. GO2 is a wonderful trial, as Zahid said. It fits majority of our patients because they are not old, but they are frail. So. Probably this is one of the few trials in the whole world where 60% dose is giving better OS and non-inferior PFS that probably I have never seen any other trial like this. 
so this is a wonderful thing for us number one number two even we discuss about many drugs like second third and fourth line i think in our setting what zahid was telling in nhs they have a restriction for uh, reimbursement so we don't have reimbursement we need to think like that we need to be very judicious rather chasing it i mean what i understand palliative said that there is no role of chasing the drug patient with very aggressive treatment or very high dose rather go but conservative and it gives good results so for us i think zilox is still the gold standard what i think to start with mm-hmm. then move to single agent and uh, regarding the dosite excel trial as you sumon said in prostate also we know that there is a trial of low dose is applicable and there are some paper coming out from hong kong and singapore they said that asian can go out with 75% of the full dose of docetaxel in breast cancer so this type of thing we can extrapolate and we can try here but i have a small become a suggestion to zahed and dr uzi and also dr mohajal said look you people are doing some great job like doing some new permutation combination palliative setup if we share among ourselves we can try some of the patient and if all of us gather our patient together we can make a good number of patient pool and we can look at the outcome so what dr mohajal said that yox for 14 days maybe if we are convinced we can participate with his trial and make a large number bigger number of patient and look at the outcome that is possible and finally i want to say that uh, we should know where to stop zahed was telling six cycle i think the ma- still magic number six works because in stomach cancer pushing like colon cancer without giving chemo holiday probably not a very justified thing rather to give some time and to regain and that is a more standard thing because we know it is not colon cancer we are not looking at a peak survival in metastatic stomach so when it is a uh, palliative stomach cancer we need to really look at the patient not only look at the prescription that what is the standard of situation of the patient because patient will survive from disease and die from toxicity that should not be our ultimate goal so thanks everyone it was a wonderful discussion i think and i think in our subsequent discussion session we will listen to more regarding because people are very excited about immunotherapy yeah. but unfortunately i don't believe that the i mean i don't believe i mean there is not enough data to prove a big magic so we will go in deep into it in the next week discussion we will listen actually what is the behind because it colors is very beautiful but immunotherapy is not shining everywhere very nice so we really need to know the strength and weakness of of this colorful drugs because not only the money but also we need to know the strength and weakness of this drug thank you so in this opportunity i would like to <coughs> inform all the participants our tomorrow session will be on this immunotherapy uh, not only immunotherapy in, in this <coughs> in in this topics we would like to cover this uh, herceptin and all the biological therapies that are applicable for stomach cancer it will be presented by dr jahangir alam who is a medical oncologist working in national cancer institute Uh, so uh, as you know that sanofi is our scientific partner uh, i would like to request dr abbas uh, to say few words on behalf of sanofi uh, thank you sir uh, good afternoon and assalamu alaikum uh, honorable chairperson uh, respected speaker and foreign guests and our most valued invited doctors uh, it's my privilege to have been asked for a vote of thanks on this today's scientific session uh, this is nahid hassan assistant manager on tozi and sanofi bangladesh on behalf of sanofi uh, and my entire team uh, stating gratitude to Ontozy Club for giving us the opportunity to be the partner in this scientific session. Uh, a big thank uh, to our honorable chairperson, Professor Dr. Mohammad Emehai, to inaugurate the uh, event and his uh, valuable presence. Uh, at first, I would like to express uh, my sincere thanks to our today's speaker, Dr. Asma Siddika, Associate Professor, Department of Radiation Oncology, NICRH, uh, for giving an excellent presentation on uh, role of chemotherapy in advanced stomach cancer. I must mention uh, our deep sense of appreciation uh, for our overseas uh, guest faculties, uh, Dr. Jahid Khan, uh, consultant medical oncologist, uh, Capital Bridge Cancer Center, Liverpool, Liverpool, and Dr. Yuji Meura uh, for their explanation and expert opinion. I would also like to acknowledge uh, our gratitude to today's moderator, Dr. Mustafa. this shumon sir for conducting the session and academic secretary dr fm kamaluddin sir for his valuable feedback as you know since sanofi bangladesh is the pioneer in oncology products in bangladesh and our uh, taxotere and nidobzetin plays a vital role in uh, the management of different solid tumors including stomach cancer so from very beginning uh, sanofi always patronizing the academic and scientific sessions for the knowledge development of the healthcare professionals 
I also extend my thanks to On Project Club for developing the uh, platform, and we are privileged to be the part of this scientific session. With all of your support, uh, hopefully we'll collaborate many events in near future. Until then, uh, stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Abbas. Uh, now I would like to request our professor, uh, our chairperson, Professor Amy Heiser, uh, to say a few words and conclude the session. Professor Amy Heiser. Thank you, John. Very good, nice dis discussion session. He has right things very really nicely placed. Very nice discussion, and also the guy. Thank you, and also and thanks to the Mura for some idea. And all the participants, and thanks to everybody, and we think they're going on. But what you said, tomorrow we have a session. Do we have it tomorrow or the next Sunday? Next tomorrow, we have, tomorrow we have a program, sir, regarding the cervical uh, cervical cancer uh, radiology that is that will be on 8, 8 p.m. But we are talking about the immunotherapy that will be next Sunday. Next Sunday. You should say yeah. that next Sunday. Yes. Next Sunday. Thank you all very much. Sir. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, <clears throat> I would like to request all the participants to join us in our next session. That is the next Sunday, same time, topics immunotherapy or, a, or all biological therapy that we approved for advanced stomach cancer presented by Dr. Jahangir Alam. So till then, stay safe. Uh, with uh, such permission, I would like to close the session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.